So what is it about the manual focus lens um, that I'm in such hot pursuit of this perfect manual focus lens for the Fuji uh, X-Pro3? First and foremost is I love the feeling of creating an image. And although you can create an image with any camera from the iPhone to the X-Pro3, the X-Z4, um, you know, you just push the button and it fires off and it focuses for you. It sets your aperture, your shut, whatever you want, it does it for you. But when you manually focus, um, this is my first 35 millimeter, uh, the actual Pentax K1000 with a 50 F2 on here. And this was a pentaprism, you know, it gave you a fuzzy fuzzy look until you got it in focus and then the little fuzzy box went away. Anyway, but when you create an image with a manual focus lens that's not focused by wire that you can, when you, when you turn it, you know, it actually moves glass. Um, and, and to have that control, um, that fine control over your focus point and to have to do the focus point, it's just a it slows you down. Um, it makes each image mean something. You know, there were uh, there was a, a person I was shooting in the studio not too long ago, and on the side she edits images. Doesn't edit. I, I would say she um, picks the images for the photographer in Lightroom for weddings and I, I asked I said how many weddings um, how many weddings do you do and she told me and she said and I said about how many photos does she usually shoot for a wedding and she said a um, little more than 3,000 and I thought to myself wow and I know that's normal for today um, you know I still don't shoot that many if I go to a wedding um, I, I don't think I shoot a thousand if I go to a wedding but it's because of how I was brought up in this industry and and we used film um, when we used medium format we had 12 or 24 exposures or 35 we had 36 exposures and i was thinking to myself you know rough math you know 3,000 photos would have cost us probably 500 dollars or more for the film processing and, and proofing um, and that was a big chunk of change back then because you know we didn't get three thousand dollars for a wedding back then. Um, you know that would have been half your profit just on film and processing. But it's really easy just to push the button um, and machine gun shoot, uh, and you, you're bound to get an image out of there no, no matter what. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do. Um, but just remember, you only have so many weddings you can do like that because at three thousand images a pop and if your shutter is rated at 150 or 200,000 you can go through that in a, a few weddings. Um, but getting back to the manual focus th there is a great feeling of creating that image um, you know setting your aperture your shutter and um, manual focusing it and it it makes you appreciate each image that you take no, I'm not saying doing this for professional jobs or anything like that, um, but it will help you be a better photographer um, with autofocus. With it makes you more aware of the image that you're taking, um, and it makes you appreciate the image that you're taking more. Um, there's a thing with um, Leica users. Um, you know, it's eight thousand dollars for the camera and eight thousand dollars for a lens, but you know, every image taken with a Leica is a masterpiece. Well, yeah, if it's $8,000 for the camera, $8,000 for the lens, and it's manual focus, and boy, if that shutter goes, you're in trouble. They shoot very sparingly to save their cameras and lenses. Um, you know, all joking aside, it's, it's that you have to take your time and create the image. And doing that is... Um, you know, yeah, absolutely, you can do it with the current lenses that you have, with the um, automatic lenses, automatic focus lenses that you have now, but it's, n it's nowhere near the same thing. Um, number one, you're forced to, because you, if you have a manual lens, it's manual, that's it, you can't do anything else. Number two, it's not focused by wire, 
when you turn this, you're, you're turning elements. It's a different feeling, it's a different, uh, it's different altogether. But I highly recommend, I don't care if it's a cheap lens, you can get, um, and I'm not saying Voigtlander's cheap, but they're very inexpensive compared to Leica's. Even the Seven Artisans and um, the off-name brands, uh, the, the, you can get a, a, a decent lens and just go out and shoot with it and make that. I, I made a comment on, to, you know, to one of the people I like. This is my fishing trip when I shoot with a manual focus lens, um, because you know you're 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 throwing you're throwing your bait in the water and. You know, sometimes you're going to catch something, sometimes you're not. You know, sometimes you're going to be in focus, sometimes you're not. Um, but it's great practice, and it's, it, it'll slow you down, and it'll definitely help you create the images versus just pointing and shooting. Um, and I think, myself included, we all get into that, um, that rut of just pulling the button down and hoping your subject does something worthwhile and then trying to feel good about it when you see the image. You're going to feel a lot better about it when you create each image, um, and I highly, highly recommend it. Um, it. It's a good feeling, it, and it it will hone your skills. Um, but definitely try it. Um, and I hope I I just wanted to put this out there because I, I get a lot of emails and uh, messages saying, you know, what is the what's the gain of this pursuit of this manual focus lens, and you know. For me, it's a matchup with the, the sensor from the X-Pro3. Um, I want just the right focal length because I'm at a 1.5 crop now. Um, you know, I don't want, you know, the 56, uh, was, you know, there's a lot of people that get great photos of that thing. And I just, it just it didn't work for me. Um, so I, that's a combination between the focal length and, and, and the lens itself and the autofocus and everything. And I'm, I would love a 1.2 that gave me the 1.2 when I needed it because I don't often shoot in 1.2, but if you have it, you know, for that extra special look. So I'm looking for that. I'm looking for a focal length that's, you know, not as much as an 85 on a full frame, um, but not as low as a 35, you know. I'm looking for a middle point, and I think I found a lens that, that may fit the bill. Um, I, I did order it. I'm waiting for it to come in. I will definitely do a video on it um, when it does come in and, and let you know what I think. Um, but in the meantime, um, I, I'm just shooting with you know regular Fuji lenses. Um, loving the 33 and 18, by the way. They're absolutely fabulous. Um, but I will definitely let you know about the new lens coming in. It, it is a Voigtlander. Um, I've had their glass before and absolutely adore it. Uh, some work on some sensors, some don't work on other sensors, so, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, but anyway, that's why I use uh, manual focus. Um, I hope you give it a shot um, because you're really, honestly, you're going to be pleasantly surprised and, and you're going to um, enjoy photography uh, like you never have before if you haven't tried it before because it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, you'll get a lot of out focus shots, but you won't care. It's just once you get that one uh, boy, it's a great feeling um, it, that you created this from from nothing. It's you know anybody can shoot with autofocus and auto everything and machine gun it until something good comes out. But man, when you create it, it's a feeling. It's it's something like anyway. Try it, um, and if you do, let me know. Uh, let me know what lenses you're using and share the shots. I'd love to see them. Um, anyway, thank you. Um, hope this helped uh, answer your questions about my insanity with the manual focus pursuit. Um, and I'll let you know how it goes. And I'll do a video when I get that lens in and see how it is. Thanks for listening.